Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. Welcome to the Networking Rx podcast. I am your host, Frank Egan, founder and president of AmSpirit Business Connections. Today, I have another great guest. As our ongoing subscribers know, often on this podcast, I will be sharing ideas, insights, and best practices for building professional relationships and helping you excel with your business networking. Occasionally, however, I will be interviewing subject matter experts, authors, speakers, thought leaders, social scientists. These people share their knowledge to help us build better relationships, have better relationships, and understand why humans interact the way they do. So today, today's guest is Kashawn Parker. Um, Kashawn is, well, we'll get her to tell her story, but uh, she's dedicated herself personally and professionally to serving others. Uh, as she'll explain, she's a widow and she discovered rather quickly that she, in becoming a widow, she didn't, uh, she didn't want to be a victim, but rather be an ally su- for support for others. And um, she spent nearly 20 years working to help others discover their unique talents in life. And she decided it was time to practice what she preached. Um, and so she took the career jump and it, she uh, went on her own in October of 2020, as many people did. She's part of the great, uh, the great resignation um, and decided to pursue her passion for helping and coaching others. And she's launched a business called Next Step Forward LLC. Um, and she's a speaker, a certified transition coach. And I will turn it over to you, Sean, uh, Kashan, excuse me. Um, I, you know, look, why don't you run people through this story? I've heard it. It's inspiring. Um, and then I'll kind of lead this into what I would love to pick your brain on. So absolutely. And uh, thank you, Frank, for having me. I'm, I'm happy to, you know, just really share the platform with you and, and to be able to share my story. So um, as for me, I am someone that has encountered a, a lot of, um, of loss. And, and what that loss has done for me is, is just kind of opened up doors to resiliency. So my, my story goes something like this. Um, when I was 15 years old, uh, I lost my mom. And, um, and then again, at 17 years old, I, I lose my dad. Um, as a result of losing both parents, I am separated from my siblings. There's a total of seven of us. And um, because no one would take all of us on, um, we are considered wards of the state and we're just kind of separated at this point. From there, um, I I lose my grandparents. So I now have no parents. My siblings are all all over the place. And now my surviving grandparents are, are of no more. And then six months later, I lose my husband. And it, it, it was just kind of the, the spiraling of everything that just, you know, it, it stings a little bit. <laughs> and, and you start to ask yourself, you know, first, why me? You know, and, and then you, you really start to take a look at, okay, well, what do I want to take away from this? What, what do I want, you know, my experiences to say about me? And then how can I start to use some of those experiences to, to help others? And what I've learned is, is just by embracing my own personal truth, what it took for me to, to really accept that, you know, first and foremost, people are gifts to us. We never know um, what someone is going through, what they have to offer, and how long we will have them. So value them, cherish them for the way they show up just as they are. Um, And then it is really to get clear with yourself on what do you wanna do while you're here? What do you want your life to say about you when all is said and done? What do you wanna to to say 
Um, and, and those aren't real easy things to answer, right? And and it, it's not, you know, some of the the easiest things to deal with. But for me, it was more empowering to learn to embrace that yes, we love, we live, we lose. It's as simple as that. And then it's okay, now Kashan, what what do you want that to say about you? And I I, I mean we're talking years. It, this is not, I just woke up one day and I, I said I had it. No, 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 no. It, it took work. I had to begin to take some of the fire and sting out of my own story by sharing it, by, you know, acknowledging that, yes, it was painful. It was challenging, but it could also help someone. Um, and, and that's what I began to do. So I, I began to join networking groups to, you know, embrace sharing your story, embracing um, your truth, and then how to just step in and fill in the gap for others who, who may also be struggling. And it has paid, I mean, it's paid tenfold. It, it really has. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, your story is inspiring. I mean, it's truly inspiring. It's, uh, you know, I, I know people out there that have lost any one of those aspects, certainly grandparents. I mean, that's to be expected, but I mean, you, you lost a lot. Um, you lost a lot. And, uh, um, you know, again, I, you know, it, it's, it's inspiring. I guess where I want to go with this is, you know, as a program on, on relationships. And when I heard your story on, uh, in Jeff Lord's group, shared connections, I knew I wanted to get you on because the biggest relationship we have, the most important relationship we have is with ourselves. Yes. Um, and I would imagine there was a point or points where you were just like, you know what? I, I, I don't want to see anybody. I don't want to do anything. Well, that doesn't lend itself well to the networking world. And so I want to try and help, help the listeners understand because we're, we're all either in that point or, we're all know somebody who's in that point. How do you get yourself up off the floor? Absolutely. And the, um, and the floor is different for everybody, right? I mean, you, you, you went through a lot. I was sharing a story with you before we hit record. And, um, you know, I'm sure people would, you know, uh, I'll share one of my floors. Like I remember one point I was practicing law and somebody didn't pay me. Yeah. I was devastated, right? It was 500 bucks. You know, it's, it's not the end of the world. It's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. But when you start putting things in perspective, it's like, yeah, that's not much. I can make another $500. Can't make another husband. Can't make another, you know, father of your children. So anyhow, you know, how did you kind of pull yourself up? So, and, and and thank you for sharing that, right? It does not happen all at once. And and of course it's all about perspective and, and keeping, you know, keeping a good level head about what it is, right? You you, you gotta pick your battles. Any given day we, we get an opportunity and something is going to happen. So it, it's it's the the big things that happen and then the the things that are, you know, how can I manage this? So for me it was one, just giving myself permission to acknowledge my story and how it made me feel. And, you know, I, I love motivation. I love inspiration talk. Like, I, it's why I do what I do. But I, I wouldn't give that space the justice that it deserves if I didn't say at some point when, you know, if you, you fall into a pit deep enough, that's all you can see. Like, and you've got to give yourself credit that, Sometimes it overtakes you. And then it becomes, I've got to now leverage myself to get to the other end of that spectrum where I can start to get up. Well, it starts by, you know, acknowledging that, yep, I, I fell down. It starts by acknowledging that, yep, I, I might need some support to get out of this hole. It, and it's, it, it goes from there. And, and so what you'll notice is just day by day you start to pull a little bit more away from the story, the gas behind what happened to you and more into that space of where you want to be and what you want to do with it. But there's no one recipe, right? Yeah. I told a woman the other day, I go, 
you know, for you, your step one may be just to open the window. She was sitting in darkness for two weeks because she was depressed. Can you open the window today? What does that look like? Can you let the sun in? You know, and and accepting that that's enough. If that's all you have, that is all you have. And then tomorrow, what do you want to do? And soon enough, it won't become day by day. It'll become week by week. It'll become month by month. And you'll realize that, you know, that thing that happened, yes, it's significant, but I did not let it control. I did not let it rule me. I did not let it dictate how my life is going or will go. Now, you you lift up a lot of people with what you do. I mean, that, that is what you do, lifting people up. Um, you're not winning. You're not working with lottery winners. You're working with, uh, you know, people who've had sustained big loss. Um, and it, it runs the spectrum. Who helped you? Who helped you? You know, I, you know, you're helping other people up. It's, I don't know. It's. So, the very first person to, to really help me where I could hear it. And I didn't, I, I you know, it kind of muted the voices, my own internal voices was my son. And, and it was, you know, I, I was sitting on the edge of my bed and I was just bawling. And I had to um, take, take my kids to school. Cause of course life goes on, right? You still got to function. Yeah. Was this and after said, the death of your husband then I assume? After my husband, yes. Okay. And he says, well, mom, I know you got to drive us to school, but I really don't want you to get in that car. I see you and I see you. You're crying in the car. You're you're just crying constantly. And I just can't I can't lose you like I lost my dad. And I heard that. I mean, and it just it, it really hit something in the core of me. And I go, you know, you're right. But then from there, it gave me the strength and the power to say, I need help out of this because I, I didn't know what to do. Yeah, I just I felt it, but I didn't know what to do. So his words to me made me realize I want to fight for myself. I want to I want to get out there and fight. And so I hired a coach. And, you know, interesting, interestingly enough, when I, I hired this woman, I thought she was working with the whole family dynamic. So I go in with my family. I'm like, we need help, grief support. And it wasn't so much of her working with the family. It was she began to work in me. She began to help me take the gas out of my story. She began to to help me embrace everything that happened as I wanted to pay respect to it, but then really start to build the foundation blocks to how I wanted to to go forward, understanding what had happened. Interesting. Interesting. Now, do you still work with that coach or are you? I do. Okay. Yes. She's probably very proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm would... proud of her. I tell her she's my lifesaver. She really is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know what? In 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 res- she's kind of that grand lifesaver, like grandparents, right? Because mm-hmm. she's empowered you to help other people. And but for that, there are other people out there who, you know, who are who are struggling. Um yes. Yeah. You know, are there exercises? I don't mean physical exercises, but just exercises that people can be doing. Um, I mean, you like you, you use the term um, accept your story, I think was what you said. Um, what does that mean? I mean, is, it, is that something you're writing down or uh, please share? Absolutely. So when I say accept your story, it is. Yes. If it's journaling journal. If it is therapy, seek therapy. If it is, you know, listening to to music that kind of brings you to a spot where you can, I mean, really embrace what has happened. For me, it was journaling. I literally wrote letters to everyone that I was grieving. And I wrote to them in where I was, how I was feeling, the hurt, the pain, the fact that I was missing them, the fact that I wanted them to continue, but they couldn't. And in and, and doing that, it healed me. It healed that part of me that, that was able to look around at others and say, but they have, but I don't. They, they, they got to keep their people, but here I am and everybody that's close to me, I, I had to say goodbye to. It, it really helped me to embrace, but I got to spend their last moments. Like it, there's no greater gift. I, I, I just, there's no greater gift than saying someone spent their last moments with me. Um, and 
in, in doing so, when I share my story, it's I respect the emotion. I let it come. I let it be as it is. And then I use that emotion to kind of fuel that that power to to get to others to say, speak your truth, whatever it is. You know, you said you had a client that didn't pay you at the time. I'm sure it pissed you off. That's yeah. OK. Yeah. Yeah. It was less <laughs> about the money and more that, hey, this guy got one over on me. That just made me mad. You know? Yes. Yes. And to acknowledge that it is not about the five hundred dollars. No. It's the fact that you hired me to do a job. I delivered on my end and you didn't deliver on yours. That's a problem for me. Yeah. So when you can accept things like that, then you're not you're not led and fueled in charge. It's when you begin to judge those spaces. Well, I guess it was only five hundred dollars. No, it's it's about more than that. Yeah. Get to what that is, and then you can accept it, and then you can kind of figure out how to do something different next time. Maybe I collect the money up front. Yeah. I you know what that. I you know what I did? Is I sent him a note. This is all pre-email. I sent him a letter forgiving the debt. Basically, yeah. basically acknowledging that um, the debt is forgiven. I you you must be in a you, you're must be you're a good person, so there must be something horrible going on in your life for you not to pay this to me. I feel so much better by just forgiving the debt. Um, and to be honest, that really kind of it was a it lifted the burden for me, right? Because I'm not mm-hmm. angry. I've given the money away. I've given up on it. It made him mad. It made him mad because I had assumed that, and I didn't intend to, um, but I assumed that something was wrong. And nothing's wrong in my life. It's like, well, I, I don't know. There was a reason why you didn't pay the money, you know? Um, but it doesn't matter at this point, you know? Well, I'm going to get you the money. You don't owe me money. <laughs> and that was the end of it. <laughs> um so, oh, well, let's shift gears. Let's talk about your practice, um, okay. types of people you work with, types of things you do, individual one-on-one groups. Um, I know you're a big speaker. Um, you know, those are the things I really kind of want to d- delve into. Okay. Um, so for me, um, the, the concept behind Next Step Forward really is, is to outreach is empowerment and it is embracing your story, your truth and who you are. Um, but also it is for every widow that kind of stands in, in the space where I was. What I had learned once I lost my husband was I had no idea about the woman that I was. I was, I was busy being a wife, a mom, a daughter, a sister, you know, everybody else. I, I, I embraced and wore the labels and, and I love them. Okay. And then I had these two that I didn't know what to do with, widow and single mom. I I didn't want those. So it it forced me to get to a space where I had to define who I wanted to be in this space because I knew that I could no longer go and embrace that woman that was married. I can't go back before her to the the pre-dating phase. So who do I want her to be now? And and that really is the work that I do with other widows. It's Yes, it's okay. You you really are in a great space where you get to define who this woman is that comes forth out of all of the tragedy that you've just experienced. What do you want to do with her? What do you want her to say? Um, and, and so we we go in and, and we just, again, we embrace the story. We heal that space so that we can use it to sculpt who we want to be and how we wanna show up for others. If that's what you wanna do, not everybody wants to be a, a service agent, but yeah. what do you wanna do so that your story really isn't dictating your life? Because it, it, it does happen to you. Your, your story happens to you, you're, you're impacted by it, and, you know, and that's okay. But what do you, what do you wanna do about it? Um, and, and so that really becomes the work that we do um, when someone usually partners with me. Um, and are then they, I do, are they groups? Okay, go ahead. You, sorry. Oh no, sorry. So they are. They're more one on one. I'd like to get into the the group space, but I, I haven't really navigated that yet. It's kind of my, my learning process. Um, but then I, I get into a lot of speaking, and and the speaking portion is really just what we've been talking about here because everybody has something. Everybody, but you know, when you go out and you're talking to, to folks. What you'll get is the surface, the, the this is what I do, when who you are is showing up with you. And so it's, it's about getting folks to just really unpack 
you know, you know, you're not going and dumping all your story on anybody, but it is that part of you that makes you unique. Who are you? Right. And, and why are you special? And, and what can we gain from our partnerships together? And just speaking in that space to individuals to say, figure out how to use your story and, and use that to get to know people, because you never know who I mean, who's going to come across your path that could really use, you know, who you are on the other end of it. Sure. Sure. When you go out to speak, what sorts of groups do you go out to? Or- so right now it is predominantly um, networking groups where I've, okay. I'm just, there's a, they say, oh, I got a networking committee. You want to join? And I join and then, you know, I'm asked to, to be a speaker. Um, but the hopes is, I mean, there's no ceiling for me. I, sure. I will go anywhere and everywhere because I believe in, in the message that I carry. Um, you know, to to do um, talks with schools and local um, nonprofit communities and, and, you know, even TEDx. I mean, whatever it is, the, sure. the message is, is going out. Yeah, I, I would imagine there are people who hear your message and reach out because of it. Because like you say, everybody's kind of carrying a burden with them. Some are bigger than others, but some are hearing your story and kind of what you do and saying, yeah, this, this is it. This is where, this is my, this is my rope up, my hand up, um, Mm -hmm. and then reach out to you. I'm I'm guessing, you know, I think that's how a, a lot of people find, you know, their, their coaches, um, something like that. It, it, it is. It's, it's a lot about, you know, they, they hear the message and they sit with it for a while. So surprisingly, it is not, you know, just kind of once the, the call concludes, it's, no, I really sat with what you, what you said. And, and boy, I got to tell you, thank you. Thank you, because I had to search within me to, to really accept what was going on. Yeah. And, and how to deal with it. And, and those are the, the clients that I, I just, I really appreciate them because when they show up, they're ready to work. Yeah. You know, it's interesting when you, we were on shared connections together, uh, another shout out to Jeff Lord. Um, <laughs> when we were on shared connections together and then we were sent into breakout groups and you gave us the question of, you know, what, you know, I forget what it was exactly, but you know, what demons do you have? You know, what, mm-hmm. you know, what are you struggling with? Um, I was in a group of five people and I was embarrassed because I really didn't have anything. I mean, it's not like, like I said, my, you know, it's, everybody really had something. It was, you know, wow. Oh my gosh. I, you know, looking, you know, you're, you're a professional, you know, and you're dealing with this. Um, and not that professionals can't, but everybody had, they had some real issues um, that they were dealing with, you know, for, uh, uh, prior abuse or whatever it was. And um, I was really kind of taken back because when the question was asked on the front end before we went into breakouts, I was like, oh boy, this is, this is going to go nowhere because in my world, I, you know, my kid didn't pick up his room. I don't know. You know, it's, you know, I mean, we, uh, and it's not that I've never had tragedy, but it's just, I'm knock wood, knock wood, you know, sitting here right now, I don't have that situation but i was surprised that you know 80 percent of the people four out of five had something that was like wow and if i i don't know i I don't know if i would be here if i were you so anyhow um any age any gender right now um i get mostly widows and they are they're really between the ages of 30 and 50 okay um, you know, but I, I don't refuse anyone. If you, if you are not widowed and you're like, look, okay, I still have stuff going on and I want to, yeah. I want to work. Yeah. As long as you're willing to do the work, let's, let's do it. Let's dive in and see what's going on. Okay. What would be a good way for people listening to get a hold of you? Yeah. So I am very active on LinkedIn. Um, Kashawn Parker, CPC, I think it says now. And, um, I have a Facebook page called Next Step Forward LLC um, that I'm also very active in. Those are the best ways to, to reach out and, and connect with me. Um, and then you can also email me at kashanparker at gmail.com. Okay. I'll get that in the uh, in the show notes um, just so people have a quick wave. Most people listening to podcasts are uh, they're driving. 
<laughs> just drive. It'll be in the show notes. <laughs> Relax. Um, she'll respond to your email. Kashan, thank you very much for your time today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Frank. This has been a pleasure. Thanks for joining us on the Networking Rx podcast. Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is a copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.